How's it going, everyone? Um, my name is Ty Overcash, and I'm with JTech Industries. We are a material handling company out of central Illinois that <clears throat> has decided to join OCP two years ago. Um, thanks to Steve Helvey here, kind of got us involved. Today, I'd like to explore the critical role that safety and ergonomics play uh, within moving server racks throughout a data facility. This has kind of been a topic that's been vastly overlooked and it still remains a, a pretty vital aspect within DC operations. So what matters in data server rack movements? The first most important aspect to consider is safety and ergonomics. By focusing on employee protection, we reduce the risk of personal injury and related costs. Next, by streamlining rack moves with safer methods, we improve overall efficiency. This allows a reallocation of skilled labor to more critical tasks. Lastly, asset protection. Server racks are pretty expensive pieces of equipment, and protecting the, these assets will help ensure long-term operational stability. Understanding the physical demands of moving data server racks. There are many challenges when manually attempting to move server racks. These can be very heavy, often exceeding 1,800 kilograms when fully loaded. Most are equipped with small casters, which not only struggle to move, uh, roll smoothly, but are also prone to developing flat spots over time. Additionally, the absence of proper handles or dedicated grab points increases the difficulty and risks associated with manual movement. Most server racks require a manual push for repositioning, leading to significant ergonomic strain on the workers involved. The combination of all four swivel caster rigs further complicates straight movement, reducing stability and making precise control a challenge. Understanding these physical demands is crucial for improving safety and efficiency in server room operations. Identifying hazards in current handling practices. The manual handling throughout receiving, depalletizing, and deploying each rack often involves between two and four people. While additional people might help with some of the ergonomic strain involved, <clears throat> it creates a demand for increased labor and minimizes throughput. These employees are tasked with pushing these heavy assets multiple miles each day, creating problematic fatigue. And due to the weight of the rack and narrow wheelbase, we often see tip hazards when maneuvering throughout the DCs. This has created a need for rack stabilizers to many of the hyperscalers operations, driving assembly time and non-value added tasks. Even though most DCs are clean environments and have well-kept flooring, there are often hazards within expansion gaps, doorways, and tight aisles. In order to obtain objective data, we designed an ergonomic test using OCP's OpenRack V2 and V3 to get a better understanding on what the actual ergonomic forces would be when pushing and pulling fully loaded products. The push-pull criteria from new guidelines for designing, des designing safe pushing and pulling tasks from Gary Allred, a PhD and program director at SRI Ergonomics from the Ohio State University provides standards for ergo testing as follows. An operator must use two hands located between 12 and 36 inches apart and a height ranging between 32 inches and 48 inches from the ground. We took these requirements into consideration and mounted a load cell push-pull measuring device 18 inches apart and 42 inches high on two simple racks that we had within our facility. For this study, we loaded each rack to 3,000 pounds to simulate a real-world scenario. We then set up a test in our customer experience center to measure the forces needed to push and pull these racks over a distance of approximately 6.8 feet or 2.1 meters. We had five test subjects, each performing a push and a pull movement five times, giving us a total of 25 push and 25 pull measurements. Let me walk you through the results. For the ORV2 racks, the average push force measured at 111.4 pounds, 
while the average pull force came in at 113.68 pounds. Looking at the ORV3 racks, the average push force was slightly lower at 101.5 pounds with an average pull force of 109.5 pounds. These numbers are particularly significant when we consider ergonomic standards. According to Snook and Cerilio, the acceptable push and pull forces for 75% of the population are much lower. For males, these limits are 36 pounds for a push and 33 pounds for a pull. For females, the limits are even lower at 25 pounds for a push and 26 pounds for a pull. When we compare our findings to these standards, it's pretty clear that the force is required to move both the ORV2 and ORV3 racks loaded to 3,000 pounds are well above what's considered ergonomically safe for most people. This is crucial consideration as we continue to develop and refine our products to ensure safety and usability. Now that we've established the significance of the push and the pull forces we measured, it's important to understand the tools available for evaluating these forces against industry standards. This slide highlights some of our key tools and guidelines that are instrumental in assessing the ergonomic safety for manual handling carts. Firstly, we have the Liberty Mutual Snook tables, which are widely used to determine the maximum acceptable forces for pushing and pulling tasks. These tables are designed to help to reduce the risk of injury, providing benchmarks that account for factors such as task frequency and hand height. In addition, the Bureau of Workers' Compensation, in collaboration with The Ohio State University, has developed guidelines and a tool that allows for a detailed evaluation of push and pull tasks. This tool considers various parameters like the type of exertion, hand height, and specific force required to determine the safety and tasks for different segments for the population. Lastly, we have NSEER's AI-powered tool, which integrates the Liberty Mutual tables and BWC guidelines and NIOSH standards to provide a, a comprehensive analysis using video data. This tool assigns a composite score that indicates the priority level for task modification with detailed feedback on specific body joint stress and overall body factors. These tools are critical for identifying ergonomic risks and making informed decisions to enhance workplace safety. By using these standards and tools, we can ensure that our products not only meet, but exceed safety expectations. Different strategies to enhance safety during rack handling. Improving safety doesn't always require high-tech solutions. Simple changes like creating standard operating procedures for multi-person push the addition of push handles, or even minimal identifiable grab points can make a significant difference. Maintaining smooth floors with minimal transition points, widening doorways, and open areas for maneuvering racks into their point of use could greatly reduce the potential for unnecessary hazards. Possibly the best solution would be to consider using mechanical advantages or automated solutions with specialized equipment to reduce human interaction with such a challenging asset. At JTEC Industries, we've developed innovative solutions that streamline the life cycle of server racks from rack manufacturing to the point of use. Whether it's moving loaded racks to a data center campus or ensuring safe handling at the end of their life, our solutions are designed to maximize efficiency and safety. Having discussed the challenges and risks associated with push and pull forces, especially when dealing with fully loaded racks, it's crucial to explore alternative solutions that can make these racks safer and more efficient. This slide highlights several specialized solutions designed to protect your investments and enhance safety during the handling of these heavy loads. We offer a range of equipment tailored to different needs. There's a power walkie, this powered solution allows for easier, safer movement of loaded racks with a single operator, reducing the physical strain on workers. There's a manual jack for situations where powered equipment isn't feasible. The manual jack provides a reliable, multi-operator alternative, still offering significant ergonomic benefits. A single bay cart is perfect for moving a single rack with precision 
ensuring that your valuable equipment remains secure. In a dual bay cart, when you need to move multiple racks at once, the dual bay cart offers a robust solution ideal for tuggers and automated mobile robots. On the right side of your slide, you'll see an image illustrating the consequences of improper handling. Equipment damage and pot potential data loss, which could have been avoided with the use of specialized tools. By investing in the right equipment, not only are you protecting your valuable assets, but we're also safeguarding the health and safety of the workforce. Ensuring that operations run smoothly and without costly interruptions. In conclusion, by focusing on safety and ergonomics, you can improve both efficiency and investment protection in your data center operations. The three products shown here are all on display with an OCP base camp and the Innovation Village uh, in a shared booth. I hope you guys have found this pretty insightful and I'd love to open it up for any questions. Great presentation, buddy. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> how many uh, facilities or what other companies are, what companies are you actually working with uh, for the, both uh, the, the manuals and the automated uh, systems, or potential automated system? So we've automated throughout a few of the hyperscalers. Uh, I think we're probably in 17 different locations at this point. Wonderful. It's working? It's working, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Question: um, International versus regional. What um, what, are, what ge geographies are you covering? So currently, we're we're only in North America with these systems. We're working on a CE certification and really trying to identify how we can scale with some reliable dealer networks over in Europe. Um, open for discussing that with with possible partners, but uh, I think we're probably a year out for for being able to deploy in Europe. One question, are you, have you considered automation in any of your processes? Certainly, yeah. Um, so the dual base solution that we've got right now is pulled by an automo uh, automated mobile robot. So it's, it's a LiDAR based um, automated solution as it stands now. Hi, Brian from Saluna. Um, <clears throat> we hey, own and operate our own data centers. We're, we have a small staff, would this help in, in terms of headcount? Absolutely, okay. no question, yeah. Keep them coming. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone.